Hi, my name is Tim Lum. I live in Washington State in the North Cascades outside of Winthrop, Washington. And I took delivery of my own black fly in June, and it's awesome. Um, I'm a career Forest Service smoke jumper, and uh, I've been in the Army Reserve as a pararescueman, and I've retired from both recently. Both of those jobs, essentially, I'm going someplace that's really scenic and beautiful to do a job and getting there in a rapid manner. I remember being like a 10-year-old you know, like boy, seeing the, the movie Red Skies of Montana with Richard Widmark. It was a color movie on TV. Anyway, I thought, when I grow up, I want to do that. Uh, years go by, I go to college. I need a summer job. I get a job doing wildland fires on ground crews. On my third year, I applied to be a smoke jumper and they hired me. So of course I didn't go back to college and I did that for 26 years and loved every yeah, minute. The thrills of the job as a smoke jumper is that you're around a lot of great guys that rely on each other. You get together to do something very hard and you're parachuting to the forest where no one's ever been. And it's, it's a rush. It's a, an amazing thing to be part of a team that you're all working for the same goal. Uh, I, after doing that for a couple of seasons, a bunch of us in 1993 started paragliding on the off time. So you would hike up to a hill, uh, wait for the good weather to go, and you would learn to paraglide you know, off of big hills and big mountains. Um, you'd ride ski lifts up to the you know up to the top ski lift of Shasta, and you'd paraglide down Shasta. That was a big deal back in the 90s, but it's that wanting to be part of the aviation, wanting to be kind of like the birds, how they do it super easy. And that's never gone away for me or a lot of people that I know. Yeah, from paragliding, I progressed to powered paragliding to allow me to fly on calmer times of the day because everyone knows who powered paraglider or made the transition. If you don't have a motor, you're flying in the afternoon to find the thermals. Once you have power, you're flying in the mornings or the evenings to get the, the glass. You know, everyone likes to water ski on a fresh lake and then the choppy stuff. But still with the powered paraglider, you're limited to the morning and the evening. And you're limited to where you can take off. And I remember during COVID, going down the rabbit hole of Alice in Wonderland on electric vehicles that fly. Uh, then I came across one of Marcus's early videos, and then that hooked me up with Opener. And I remember it was after the Pacific Air Show of last year, I wanted to go, but I wasn't available for those dates. So I went to the very next trade show. It was one in Las Vegas. And I showed up, and I met the Dream Team staff of engineers, of manufacturing people, sales, um, they're smart people, and I was definitely the dumbest one of the crew that showed up there, and we hit it off. Um, I exchanged my information thinking, ah, oh, they're not gonna call me. There's gotta be hundreds of people that wanna get in on this. And then um, I got a call like a couple weeks later, hey, can you come by in January? The, the crew would like to meet you. And I show up, and I actually touch a very first black fly uh, then they already, I think I had a Zoom call in between that. And then when I showed up, they, I walk into a room and the whole staff is right there in front of me. And they're clapping and say, you're the first customer. And that was, I was just so humbled, like no one's business. And it was unbelievable. Um, I got to sit in the cockpit for the first time. Uh, then they say, if you come back in March, we'll put you in the flight training. I come back in March. Uh, I do like, uh, I don't know, it must be 100 simulator flights. And then um, one day, I get it's lunchtime. And then I remember Christina brings a bag. It looks like she's bringing lunch. And says, oh, she's bringing me lunch. That's very nice. I'm tired and I'm hungry. She puts the bag down. I open it. It's that fancy black flight suit with a black flag, flag little uh, a name tag on it and says you're ready to fly. So that was on a Wednesday.
and I showed up for Monday. Yeah. The test site is an airport outside uh, east of the Bay Area. Yep, and, and it's flat. Um, you get it gets windy in the afternoon. Uh, there are wind turbines in the area, so you get kind of uh, once the wind goes, you get kind of laminate flow. And it's uh, flat, and uh, we fly within the airport boundaries. Uh, then it didn't really dawn on me that I was really flying until you, you put the seatbelt on and then you close the canopy. And then it's like, it really is me in here. There's nothing radio controlled about it. I have the controller that I have manipulated for well over 100 flights by then. And it makes different sounds <laughs> because it's real. It's real motor spinning. It's real pre-check sounds going on. It vibrates when even the motors start to go a little bit. The first flight, you don't expect the acceleration on the takeoff because you literally pivot back, your back's to the ground, your feet are up like, a, like an Apollo astronaut. That's what it looks like. And then you give it a throttle command to go up and it's, it's a lot of power you don't expect. And uh, it was 99% of what the simulator, you know, uh, represents. The first flight was pretty basic, and I remember Christina is still briefing it. She said, all you want to do, I want you to do is go up to 30 feet. Go left 90 degrees, uh, left 45 degrees, right 90 degrees, come back on heading and come down. And don't go too fast. You're going to want to do it really quick. I want you to do it for 90 seconds. So I remember putting my stopwatch on for 90 seconds. And then I remember going up and pivoting left and was like, oh, that's about eight seconds. <laughs> so like, okay, breathe, slow down. And then slowly go on the other way, slowing coming down. And then the auto land, it was like amazing. Yeah. And then we like uh, take a break, we're letting it charge. And then I go to the next profile, I fly the next profile. And then I even fly one more time or that time, and then I said to the head pilot, I've never seen one of these fly from the outside. Can you fly and show me? And then he said, I was hoping you'd say that. And then he got the next flight, he got in, and he flew it full capability of what it'll do. And I was just dumbfounded. It's like, wow, that is cool. But it was just so amazing that I had flown it two or three times already, and I never got to see a takeoff and a landing and cruise flight. And as far as the mechanics of the controller and the buttons, they, they operate just as a simulator. But it's the feeling and the sound through, the, through your whole body that is really the first couple of flights were about. By the time it got to the stepping the different steps, it's like, oh, this is easy. It's like the simulator, except uh, you can feel a little bit of the turbulence. You actually feel the different motors putting different uh, motor speeds and interacting with each other, um, but it, it's 99% of the simulator. Once you go into the cruise flight, you totally feel that the throttles are software limited. So you know she wants to get up and run. There's no question about it. Um, you can tell that it's throttled back to fit within, I'm sure, part 103 rules. Um, but it's very responsive and redundant, and it feels very safe. Um, most of my flying experience is in paragliders and parachutes, um, which I just have my body exposed to the elements. Uh, this aircraft, I feel, I have a four-point harness, and I have essentially a roll cage around me. Yeah, and I have a windscreen, and I have motors that can make me go up, and I have, can go in forward flight, I can go in horizontal flight, um, it seems like a lot of the guesswork and the finesse is not required. I felt confident to handle everything that can go wrong with a vehicle or right with a vehicle by the time I did that first flight. Well, the the controls of the Black Fly, it's all done in a joystick, just like an F-16, except we have redundant joysticks, one on the left side and the right side, and during the starting process, you choose which one you want to use. Um, and then essentially, if you use the thumbstick, it goes up. Thumbstick up, goes up. Thumbstick down, it goes down. 
if you want it to, you're in hover mode, you want it to pivot left, uh, you know, you twist it to the left and it yaws to the left. You twist it to the right, it yaws to the right. If you want it to go forward, you push the stick forward and it goes forward and you pull it back, it comes back. If you are in hover mode and you just let go of the stick, it'll 3D position right over the ground exactly where you're at. Yeah. And then if you want to, to yaw left or right, depending on wind conditions for the landing, you tell it. When you're ready to land, you give it the thumbstick down command until you're like 10 feet above the ground. Uh, then it has rad four radar altimeters. Uh, then it will ask you for consent to land. Yeah. Uh, then you hit consent to land, and then it will automatically land using those four radar altimeters. Once it senses it's on the ground, it will essentially shut the motors off. Yep. Yeah. Uh, over on top of the can, uh, behind the main canopy, you have uh, three pitot tubes. Uh, then you have three GPS sensors, uh, antennas. Yeah and it's uh, three redundant flight computers. The envelope for temperature is colder than you would want to fly. It's part 103 regulated, where you're going 62 miles an hour in cruise mode, like below freezing, up until, I think, 90-something degrees. Like a Tesla when it gets delivered, um, it comes with a 110 charger, and that'll take eight hours to charge. And then it comes with a, a rapid charger, and you can go I don't know, 40 minutes will get you from 20% to 80%. Yeah. Uh, then, um, so 20 minute flight from zero would take, let's say, you know, 80 minutes to charge. Well, I got my initial flights in, in uh, March, and then I got some recurrent flights in like May and June. Uh, then, um, that was early June. Uh, then I got done with that, and they said, well, Tim, are you ready for delivery? Well, of course I'm ready for delivery. Uh, and then they say, well, give us the go and we're ready to deliver. Uh, then they took me to another room like they do. They like to surprise you. Next door, there's something I want to show you. So I go into the next room, there's a velvet rope. There's my actual aircraft with you know my number on it. And it says, no way. And uh, then the build team, the people that actually built it is right there and say, Tim, this is your aircraft, you know? And then they open the velvet rope and it's like, you gotta be kidding me. And uh, then I just remember being so happy and the team that made it was right there that I just went and shook the hand of every team member of like how amazing that is. And uh, then um, you can tell that it was made with hands and love and it's like, God, oh, you guys are entrusting me with that? And it was super humbling. That was delivery. Uh, then I go home and they say, yeah, our driver, Jose, He'll be available on this day, or are you ready for delivery? And he, he delivers yeah. it. It comes in its own trailer with a custom mounting system. Um, this comes on its own, like a boat, boat trailer type thing that's a hand cart. The wings come on its own hand cart. Some of the other components have custom mounting places in the 14-foot trailer. Um, and then you can tow it wherever. Um, the last two miles of my property is on a dirt road, and it come, comes right up. Uh, then the opener team came later that morning. We broke the seal, and then we assembled it. And I had practiced, and I had practiced assembling it before in Palo Alto. And then we assemble it, and then we fly it, just like that, same day. Probably took about 30 minutes to assemble it, and now they're. You know, 30 minutes of checklists and uh, internet connectivity and then going down the same checklist that I've practiced a hundred times. Yeah. And then I get up and fly it. Since then, uh, some of the days I make five flights, some of the days I make one flight. It all depends on the weather. Um, I live out in the Methow Valley in the North Cascades. Valley floor is 1,800 feet. Uh, my property is right at 2,700 feet. You know, it's middle of fire season up there. And um, I have to fly within certain density altitudes. So right now I have a restriction of 4,000 feet. So I'm, I'm limited to the times I can fly in the day just because the area that I'm at. But morning flights and afternoon flights or evening flights are definitely awesome. Uh, the vehicle comes with its own custom trailer. 
It's capable to go up all types of roads that are not improved and it's up to your imagination where you want to take that trailer. And anyone who's been in the woods knows if you use terrain to your advantage, you might to go over one ridge that you would normally have to go on foot or horseback and now you're instantly there in a vehicle and you used half the battery power to get there. So you can use the other half to get back. Now, uh, if you're doing a round trip, you're probably going less than 10 miles out, less than 10 miles back. Uh, then uh, you're staying the elevation. You're not going to climb much higher than your takeoff elevation. There's no bonus to that. Um, most of your flights, you're cruising at 200 feet or a little bit higher, not much higher. Uh, then you're in cruise mode most of the time and you're in hover mode for takeoff and landing. I've been building my house, my own house, for the last 10 years or so. Um, and I have uh, solar panels that feed the grid. Um, I own an electric vehicle. Um, so yeah, it was easy for me to, to run a whole bunch of cable, number six cable, uh, to where I'm gonna take off and land. Near term, I'll stay in my local area, just because it's gorgeous there and I know the charging structure. Uh, eventually I'm gonna go down, and, you know, pick up my mail when the roads are horrible. Uh, yeah, go visit friends uh, who are also have, you know, don't live in town. Um, yeah, do what I would do in a vehicle, in a car. What's next? Is to expand the envelope. I mean, battery technology is only going to get better. Um, places that I want to go, I'm just going to expand further. Um, I have friends that want to meet me you know, 15 miles out, land here, recharge, go to the next place, next place. And if you look up in the North Cascades, there are so many possibilities of interesting places to go Yeah, that this vehicle will take me. Just by the sheer fact, once I leave the ground, I'm already at a very interesting place. If I had my way as a president for the day, I would um, train the people, friends and family how to do this and let them be part of this experience. Because there's so many people I know that have a passion for the aviation, but when do you have a chance? And when do you have that, everyone has that uncle or friend with the boat. I see this as the boat and I'm that uncle. And I have the time and the desire to share my love and passion for aviation with the people that uh, the, the program they call it is an early access program and they keep telling me I'm a team member and I'm a partner and um, I, I guess I'm believing it because uh, especially when I first came to them when I'm when I put my opinion on something you see six engineers writing it down on their iPad or on a piece of paper and uh, they're amazing engineers um, and there's already parts of it that they have implemented. Like if you flew on the simulator today, uh, they talk about, hey, can I transition in between these two modes? And it says, yeah, if that thing is blue, it says you can do it. I mean, I, that's one of the first things I said. You need a little indicator that say you can transition. But they continually listen. Or if I need uh, training on how to do something, or if there's any type of thing, they'll say to just turn it on Make sure you're in your Wi-Fi zone and they will download the logs and they will actually get the actual answer. Um, yeah, and it's just amazing support.